Sometimes directions are confusing. Hey class, Mr. G here. Today we're gonna to be discussing art history and we're discussing concept art and conceptual artworks and art making. So conceptual art, what is conceptual art? Conceptual art is understanding the concept of how the artwork is made. That is the basis of the entire principles behind how this movement got started. Now, most of the information I'm taking today is from the Tate Museum in London. Conceptual art is art in which the idea or concept behind the work is more important than the finished art project. It emerges as an art movement from the 60s, and the term usually refers to art made between the mid 60s and the mid 70s. Now, conceptual art doesn't just depict just doesn't mean that it was the artwork that was made during that time frame. It really has to depend on the artwork that was created, that was based upon the conception, on how is the idea of that artwork an, an established piece of art. Now, though the concept, the term concept art was used in the 60s, um, it wasn't really evolved until the later 60s as conceptual art is a defined movement. Uh, it was uh, Joseph Kasuth's series titled Art is an Idea as an Idea. And this happened between 66 to 67. One of the main artists that we'll be focused in this video is, is on Sol LeWitt. He was kind of like, I don't want to say he was the grandfather, but he was the big heavy hitter of that movement along with Joseph uh, Kasuth. So looking at his work and looking at how Sol, Sol uh, LeWitt created his artwork and the artworks that came from his con his concepts of what art should be. In conceptual art, the idea or concept is the most important aspect of the work. When an artist uses an, a conceptual form of art, it means that all of the planning and decisions are made beforehand and the execution is just a perfunctory fair. Breaking that down for you, it's just basically the artwork Itself, having the idea of a finished piece of artwork is the art in essence what art is that having that idea to create to build to construct something that is visual written performance art all these variants of, of the art world for somebody to be creative enough to have an idea that is what suffices the artwork in the conceptual art art concept now conceptual art can be and look like almost anything that is because unlike a painter or sculptor who, who will think about how best they can express their idea using paint or sculptural materials and techniques conceptual artists is using whatever materials or whatever form is the most appropriate to putting their idea across this could be anything from performance to a written description although there's no style or form used by conceptual artists from the late 60s certain trends did however emerge uh the one of the big things from that series from that world is um a lot of stuff with basic furniture which as an artist and i look at industrial design and i look at how some pieces are made i do think that i personally believe in industrial design and, and using that industrial design as an artistic element and the way that certain things are created i have a huge love of cars and classic cars and the way that the metal was shaped and how the the front end to the um kind of how each individual car is sculpted i think i think that is a beautiful piece of artwork now conceptual art is it's hard to define while other art movements are determined by age or style conceptualism is more concerned with the artist's idea conceptual artworks may take on the form of a performance like the famous work by maria abramovic or rely on texts like john belsari's i will not make any more boring art which is him just kind of writing that out several times. Now, many challenge whether conceptual art should be even considered art it is usually the lack of experience, appearance, and marketability of other pieces. However, viewers might be tempted to remark that they have, that they could have created the artwork themselves. Now, love it or hate it, conceptual artworks challenge our suppositions and expand the boundaries of art itself. Other conceptual artists also focus on the concept of construction like Sol LeWitt. While serving in the Korean War, LeWitt opened a studio in the Lower East Side of New York City, attended the School of Visual Arts, and worked as Seventeen Magazine as he explored his interest in design. Now, these early experiences clearly influenced his work as an artist. In the early 1960s, LeWitt began to create structures, a term that he, can, he preferred over sculpture. Now, LeWitt's instruction-based artworks may be his most recognizable. For these projects, LeWitt hired individuals to construct inst installations based upon his instruction. He viewed himself more as an architect that created the designs but left the actual building to others. Again, 
who is the actual artist in this? Is it LeWitt who created the instructions for the artwork, what is to be made, or is it the individuals who were hired to create the artworks? Now, some of his drawings, uh, we'll, we're, today we're gonna be referencing Wall Drawing 273. Now, he wrote this piece down, it was in September of 75, and it was written as graphite and crayon on seven walls. That was the, that was the materials that were used. The directions for this, uh, wall drawing 273 will be painted over when this exhibition ends, but it will continue to express through the set of instructions Witt devised for its creation. Despite their precision, these guidelines, like those for many artists of the wall drawings, are remarkably open to variability can be altered. As his artworks are executed over and over again in different locations, they expand or contract according to the dimensions of the space in which they are displayed and respond to ambient light and surfaces in which they are drawn. In some instances, as, as in this artwork, those involved in the installation making decisions impacting the final composition. So those who are working on this are, are going to have to alter some of the directions to make the piece actually come together as a finished product. Does that take away from LeWitt's initial setup? Maybe. Does it add to it? Maybe. Does it uh, make it any less his design because they're still following his instructions? Now, when he created this work, basic instructions that he did for this piece, again, one that will reference is that wall drawing 273, a six inch, 15 centimeter grid covering the walls, lines from corners, sides, and center of the walls at random points of the grid. First wall, red lines from the midpoints of four sides. Second wall, blue lines from four corners. Third wall, yellow lines from the center. Fourth wall, red lines from the midpoints of four sides, blue lines from four corners. Fifth wall, red lines from midpoints of four sides, yellow lines from the center. Sixth wall, blue lines from four corners, yellow lines from the center. And finally, the seventh wall, red lines from the midpoints of four walls, blue lines from the four corners, yellow lines from the center. Each wall has an equal number of lines. The number of lines and their length are determined by the draftsman. So DeWalt already right there at the end of that statement, the length is determined by the draftsman, the person creating the artwork itself. So there is open interpretation, but it's the artist giving acknowledgement to the person creating this piece that you're gonna have to make some changes on your own. I'm fully giving you that complete power to make those decisions, but at the end of the day, the artwork still falls back to LeWitt and his designs initially. Now, Solowitz's instructions never reached the exact precision of the, of the blueprints and architect Arthur. His instructions left much open to interpretation and no two installations were identical. However, his works did employ the geometric patterns and mathematical concepts used by architects. Take those, those directions, make a piece yourself. I mean, you can get seven pieces of paper, each of those pieces of paper you think of as a wall, and building off your own design of that. Now, each artist who creates one of these pieces is going to modify those directions just a little bit. Do you have single straight lines? Because it never said that it had to be a straight line. You could curve, the lines have curves, zigzags, movements to them. That creates a whole different element to the artwork that the artist did not say that you couldn't do, but it also didn't say that you had to do as well. Awesome lesson today, class. Again, conceptual art, just a Who's, who's really the artist in this? Is it the person who came up with the idea for that artwork or is it the person who created the artwork, the finished product? That's something I want you guys to discuss. Homework time class, don't forget to like, subscribe, share on all the various platforms. Again, we wanna educate as many students as we possibly can. And as always, don't forget, if you got a question, comment, or concern, raise your hand in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions for my classmates. As always, I will see you guys next class. Until then, later guys. I think I'm gonna be doing a video on pyramids in Egypt and in Mexico. What do you think?